Hello everyone! In this video, we will continue to examine topic D.3 cosmology, and in particular, we will examine the Big Bang, Big Bang model, Hubble's law, and redshift. So, uh, now that we've examined sort of the introduction of this idea of redshift due to the Doppler effect, um, we will define that redshift uh, in the case of astronomy and astrophysics as the increase in wavelength uh, due to the Doppler effect. Notice blue shift would be a decrease in wavelength, red shift would be an increase in wavelength, uh, and that's just by convention in astronomy. We typically talk about the effect on the wavelength rather than the frequency, um, and uh, red shift is significantly more important than blue shift for reasons that are about to be explained. The general idea, then, is we define the redshift z as the deviation from the emitted wavelength, so whatever the lambda is that you measure, minus the emitted wavelength, divided by the emitted wavelength, um, or delta lambda over lambda naught. And that, as it turns out, is proportional to the velocity, or the recessional radial velocity, so how fast it's moving away from us. Uh, and so if you measure the redshift, you know the velocity. So Edwin Hubble in 1929 uh, discovered what is now known as Hubble's law, which is that the recessional velocity is directly proportional to the distance away from us for a series of galaxies and for galaxies in general. He measured both the redshift and the distance away to local galaxies and discovered like in a very shocking manner that all of the nearby galaxies were moving away from us. And not only were they moving away from us, the speed with which they were moving away from us depended on their distance. This is his original graph, okay, his original chart. Um, and uh, it's important to recognize that it's not perfect. So these galaxies right here uh, were actually moving towards us. So there are a couple blue shifted galaxies, notably including Andromeda, uh, which at the current rate we will run into uh, in an astronomical but uh, reasonably um, quick amount of time. Uh, but aside from those very, very few, virtually all the other galaxies were moving away from us. Um, and uh, in the original 1929 data, okay, uh, Edwin Hubble measured sort of this section of the chart. Uh, after publishing that, he went on to measure uh, the red shifts uh, and distances to further away galaxies um, and discovered a very tight relationship, tight linear relationship. And the equation of that line, um, usually plotted as velocity versus distance rather than redshift versus distance, although, of course, if z is proportional to v, those are effectively the same axis, uh, then the velocity is equal to h naught times d, where h naught is Hubble's constant and has a value of about 67.7 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That means in those weird units, if you go uh, one megaparsec out, you would expect the galaxy to be moving away from us at 67.7 kilometers per second. If you go 10 megaparsecs out, you would expect that galaxy to be moving away from us at 677 kilometers per second. So that's why that unit is the way it is. Um, Note that this is tricky, uh, and we'll examine this unit more a little bit later. But uh, it does make it a little easier to read the chart. If the distances are given in megaparsecs as they are here and here, uh, you can see that you can immediately read off the recessional velocity. Um, and notice, these are pretty fast. Okay, So these are not insignificant velocities. Um, for z less than 0 0.2, for so these are relatively nearby galaxies, you know, because they have relatively low redshift, then uh, the distance is equal to v over h naught. That's just Hubble's law rearranged, uh, and that is about equal to c over h naught times the redshift. So using this relationship right here, you can relate the distance directly to the redshift. Notice this about equals uh, this about equals and this one right here are both only true for uh, lower velocities. All right, so what does this mean? 
okay? What does this mean? Well, this is huge, okay? Uh, Hubble's law says that the recessional velocity is directly proportional to the distance, which means that if we think about sort of what is going on, well, either we're at the center of sort of a large explosion, but really just run the movie backwards. In the past, all the matter, all those galaxies were closer together. And assume for a second that's true for every galaxy. Then the point in time when all matter was at a single point, you just run the movie backwards, is the Big Bang. Uh, and the Big Bang is a name that was used derisively by criti uh, critics of this particular theory. So the Big Bang was supposed to be a you know, you silly people, you believe there was a just a big bang and then the universe began. And uh, that term was adopted over time for this particular theory. Uh, but the idea that all that matter was at uh, a, a single point, um, very hot, very dense, uh, at some finite time in the past, uh, is known as the Big Bang Theory. Uh, and the primary initial piece of evidence for the Big Bang uh, was Hubble's law, okay? Uh, to explain a little bit more why you would expect this, um, let's consider uh, what happens if all that uh, matter was closer together and then further apart. So how, why is it that you get a graph like this of Hubble's law um, if all the matter uh, was closer together and then further apart? Why isn't it the case that perhaps we're just special? So the matter around us, the galaxies around us, uh, are moving uh, further apart, but the galaxies um, over there, say, are getting closer together. So why isn't that the case? Well, consider this. Uh, imagine this is your distribution of galaxies. Each of the sort of pet galaxies here are on a grid, and that grid shows that there's a distance between A and E and a distance between E and D. Um, and let delta D be the distance between them. And note that the uh, that delta D uh, is different for A and for B. Um, sorry, notice that DA is different than DB, DB is longer. Now imagine, and this will be our first uh, introduction to this idea, imagine the expansion of the universe is spreading the galaxies apart. So the galaxies are all getting farther away. Well consider how the change in the distance between A and E is different than the change in the distance between E and D. E and D are going to get farther apart than A and E are in the same amount of time if the expansion of space is uniform, if uh, space is expanding in the same way everywhere. So what happens is that E is going to measure D as moving apart from it faster then E measures A as moving apart from it. But not only that, B will measure the same thing. B, this other galaxy over here, will also measure that A is moving apart from it slower than E is, because E is farther away. And so this is the key idea. Um, when we talk about sort of the expansion of space, uh, we mean that all the galaxies and all matter is getting farther and apart. Uh, and what you would detect is exactly what we detect with Hubble's law. So uh, it's also important to note that, uh, and this is a modern diagram of Hubble's law using very, very, very far apart um, galaxies. Uh, these are measured using type 1a supernova, as we discussed. Um, notice they have significant horizontal error bars. These horizontal error bars are due to the fact that distance is always the problem in astronomical measurements, but they very, very cleanly align with a constant Hubble's law relationship. Um, and so this is our, our first and single greatest piece of evidence for the Big Bang. Um, Hubble's law is exactly what you would expect if the universe began uh, at a single point in space and time and has been expanding ever since.